JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 19th. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar rebounded against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Thursday during the Asian, the Asian uh, morning Friday. It gained the most versus NOC and SD, AUD, and CAT in that order while it gained the least against the British pound. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the Japanese yen. Now, the strengthening of the dollar and the yen combined with the weakening of the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi, as well as the weakening of uh, the oil related uh, NOG and CAT, suggests that markets traded in a risk off fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, although major EU indices uh, closed in positive territory, the US and Asian ones were a sea of red with NASDAQ falling the most 3.02%. Uh, the switch back to risk off uh, may have been the result of rising uh, yields uh, again. The benchmark US 10 year uh, yield climbed to a more than one year peak of 1.754% before easing to 1.706%. Uh, in any case, even if uh, yields rise a bit more, we don't expect the risk of trading to last for long. After all, the Fed's view is that uh, this is a reflection of a robust recovery and uh, pledged to keep interest rates at current levels even uh, through 2023. Officials maintain the view that any spike in inflation in the months to come is likely to prove to be temporary. Thus, we stick to our guns that equities may rebound and continue trending uh, north, while uh, the US dollar and other safe havens uh, like the yen are likely to come back under selling interest. Other risk-linked currencies uh, like the Aussie and the Kiwi could uh, rebound as well. Apart from the reduced uh, risk appetite, the oil-linked uh, NOC and CAD also felt the heat of tumbling oil prices as a new wave of COVID-19 infections, especially across, uh, across Europe, spurred fresh lockdowns and dampened hopes for an imminent recovery in uh, fuel demand. The technical picture in both WTI and Brent points to the completion of a failure swing top formation, which may result in some further declines. Thus, although we, we would expect other commodity-linked currencies to rebound soon, we prefer to stay sidelined against uh, these two as oil demand uh, worries may not dissipate that soon. Yesterday, we also had a Bank of England decision with British policymakers keeping their uh, monetary policy settings unchanged and noting that the recent plans for easing, uh, the recent plans for easing of COVID-related restrictions may be consistent with a slightly stronger outlook for consumption growth. However, they repeated that the outlook of the economy remains unusually uncertain and that uh, if the inflation outlook weakens, they stand uh, ready to take the necessary action. The pound has been trading slightly strong ahead uh, of the decision, but fell around 25 uh, pips against its US counterpart at the time of the release. However, with the vaccinations proceeding very well in the UK, we believe that the pound has the potential to rebound again, especially against the US dollar and the Japanese yen, which we expect to come uh, uh, to come back under selling interest due to the improved uh, due to an improved market sentiment. Overnight, during the Asian session today, the central bank torch was passed to the Bank of Japan, which decided to allow long-term yields to move up and down by 0.25% around uh, zero, instead of uh, by 0.2%. 
Japanese officials also decided to remove their explicit guidance over ETF purchases, saying that instead of buying a set pace, they would uh, buy only when necessary, while maintaining the 12 trillion yen annual ceiling. They also decided to confine purchases to only Tobix uh, linked ETFs instead of ETFs linked to Tobix and the Nikkei stock uh, average. The, the bank said that the chances were uh, in th the changes were intended uh, to to make easing more sustainable and the yen strengthened uh, somewhat at the time of the decision while Nikkei 225 slid. Now as for the rest of today's events, uh, on the indicators front the, uh, we only have uh, Canada's retail sales for January with both the headline and core month-over-month uh, -month rates expected to have risen but to have stayed in the negative territory. We also have two speakers on today's agenda and those are SMB Executive Board Member Fabio Banetta and Bank of England Deputy Governor for Financial Stability John uh, Canliffe. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.